Discovering the journals and letters posthumously of her RAF airman father, she set about turning his stories into a thrilling journey into the heart of Europe during the Second World War. Please welcome to the cafe, author of From Battle of Britain Airmen to POW Escapee, Angela Walker. Angela, yes. thank you. Thank you. So this is fascinating. So you didn't find out anything about this about your father until after he died. Well, I grew up hearing stories, but what I didn't realise then was that he told us the stories that he was happy to recall. He told us the stories that were adventurous and things that just didn't, didn't traumatise him, I suppose. Mm. And what I realised when I found his diaries was that there was this one hell of a story that he'd never really given us all the details of. Uh, which was incredible. Wow, so he'd kept all the diaries from that time and yeah. they were quite detailed? Yeah, he'd written every day during the war, he'd written a, a diary, a short diary entry every day. Wow. And he never mentioned these diaries existed. So we just found them um, after he died and um, started reading and really quickly found yourself just consumed with this enthralling story that uh, was mind-blowing. And as part of that story, uh, the few, I guess, is that the A right term? Absolutely, right. yes. So he was one of the few, as, as we, uh, we tend to refer to the people who fought in the Battle of Britain, um, based on the, the Churchill quote. Right. And, uh, yeah, he, he happened to be in the right place at the right time, essentially, as an airman. And, yeah. It's extraordinary, but then maybe the wrong place because he was caught, wasn't he? He ended up being captured by the Germans. Well, he did. So a little bit further on, he, he transferred to Bomber Command and started doing night raids to Germany. And on the 16th raid, they actually crashed in Belgium and he became a POW. And once his broken leg had healed, he set about escaping and managed to escape and then was recaptured. So, yes. So would you say the injury helped him in that situation? Um, no, I think it was a, a, I don't think it helped him at all. I think it, um, it hindered him more than right. anything. But where it did help him was that after he'd been a POW for a couple of years, because of this injury, he was considered a medical repatriate and he was sent home from the war early. So he was actually exchanged in a prisoner exchange wow. in late 1943, which was incredibly lucky because otherwise he would have languished in this POW right. camp for another you know, 18 months or What's so. The, they figure out this one's not going to fight again because he's, he's you know, not, not everything's not working properly. We'll, we'll send him back, get one of ours back. Exactly, exactly. That's extraordinary. It sounds like a movie. Like, when you're explaining well, it, it sounds like a movie. I know. Have you yeah. shown Peter Jackson this because he loves his World War movies? Good idea. I reckon he'd be into <laughs> making a movie out of this book. I reckon it would be great. Well, I it think... feels... It felt, when I was researching and writing it, I sort of felt like I kept having pictures that felt like movie scenes, you know, I felt like I was writing a movie scene at time and you just can't make this stuff up, can you? You can't, that's the thing, isn't it? And also, I mean, it must have been quite emotional too, finding out all the stuff about your dad when he's passed. It was incredibly emotional, yeah. I, I definitely sort of found myself sitting alone at home with these tears streaming down my face at times because his mates would get killed in action, you know, you'd be reading about these mm. friends of his They'd gone on leave, they'd gone, taken holidays together when they were given leave passes. And then suddenly this mate would be killed in action. And that happened time and time again. Makes it you, real. Yes, you would have known Dad as Dad, I guess. But after compiling this book, what did you learn about him? Well, everything about him and the man that I knew suddenly made sense. Like, because I'd suddenly glimpsed this period before I was born, I realised why he was who he was. Um, it just filled in a lot of gaps, really. Do you wish you'd known that before? Uh, look, yes and no. I kind of feel like it was probably a good thing that it, we didn't really uncover this full story until he was gone, because re-experiencing a lot of the traumatic experiences that he had mm. wouldn't probably have served him. And I think it probably is, has worked well that we've uncovered the full story uh, once he's gone. And it, but it's lovely that we did, that we did actually get to know it, because a lot of people don't ever know really what mm. their parents or their grandparents went through. Well, they don't, do you? I mean, do you think you've done him justice? Because you have to speak as him really front through the book sometimes, don't you? I mean... Well, he speaks for himself as well because there's, there's regular diary excerpts. So in a way, we both tell the story. Both of our voices are there. 
Um, so hopefully I've done him justice when it's my this voice. This is such a man thing. I'm just reading like a man diary. Uh, started PT at 7, breakfast at 8.30, beautifully fine weather, sea calm, played deck games all morning, cup of leaf tea at 11, lunch at 1. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah, to yeah. the point. Very much so, yes. And, you know, I, I guess you're immensely proud of him. Look, I really am, and I guess that is something that I learnt through this journey. I, I possibly wasn't proud enough initially, but out of naivety and ignorance, and now I've got this really clear understanding of how he was passionate at the outbreak of war about volunteering to go and fight for freedom and democracy, and he was prepared to die, and many did. And so now I just feel absolutely inspired that here were these young people, there was a generation really, that ensured that we could be free, we could enjoy the rights that we have. And yeah, I am proud. Mm. And he would have been proud of you as well, since you were gold medalist yes. at the 1990 Commonwealth Games. Well, it was quite poetic too, because he narrowly missed out on Commonwealth Games selection himself oh. as a champion cyclist. Wow. So he sat in the velodrome at the 1950 Empire Games in Auckland, having just missed out by oh. about one person. And so it was quite nice that the next time the Games were in Auckland, he got to sit in the crowd, but uh, have the joy of seeing his daughter. Exactly. And you won gold for ropes, wasn't it? And exactly. did you get three bronzes as well? Exactly. Hey, Not an overachiever. Medal. I got a bronze medal at did the you? 1990 Commonwealth Games. I was a, for like, participation? No, I was at a dancer <laughs> at the right. opening ceremony. I was an Italian dancer in the opening ceremony, and they gave us one of the medals. With oh, medal. that's Fantastic. awesome. Yeah, I still got it somewhere. Well, that's brilliant. I love yeah. the story. I love you too. This is awesome. It, it's so, so great. Thank you for coming in. Battle of Britain, Airmen to POW Escapee, the story of Ian Walker, RAF, by Andrew is available from all good bookstores right now. Yeah, thank you so much, yeah. Angela, for coming and appreciate it.